kickoff starts now. All right. So going on to the AFC South, starting off with the Houston Texans. I have the Texans going nine and seven. Okay. Go on. I'm not very high on the Texans. I think they I they had momentum last year and Watson's great, but they really don't have the same weapons. I think that their team's a bit worse. And I have them second in the division, and they're I, they make they do make the playoffs as the last wild card team. Mm-hmm. I have the Houston Texans going seven and nine actually. So you were saying you're not high in the Texans. I'm even less high in the Texans. I hot take here. No, I'm joking. Bill O'Brien is not a great coach. Um, he's had teams with success, but okay, it's it's always the question of with a coach like this. Is Bill O'Brien what's um, making the Texans as good as they are, or is he truly holding back the team? And my suspicion is that he's actually holding back the team because of they've had so much talent on their team for so long. The fact that they've never able uh, been able to go farther than an AFC championship is kind of saddening. That they've had so much talent through Deshaun Watson, um, DeAndre J. Hopkins, JJ Watt, Davian Clowney. You know they've had like this is a team that always that never fails to disappoint. And I think that they'll be disappointing this year after trading away DeAndre Hopkins. I think that there will, there seem like a team with a lot of, with a messed up culture and a lot of issues going on. That's why I have them going seven and nine. I do think that uh, Deshaun Watson will be able to keep them in games alone. And they they don't have the worst wide receiver in the league, but of course they took a massive, massive hit by losing DeAndre Hopkins and gaining so little. Uh, some significant games I have, I have them beating the, Tennessee Titans. Um, I have Jacksonville beating them, actually, because I could just, I don't know, I, I can imagine that. And I have the Cleveland Browns beating them, and those are the significant games that I have. So I'm just going to argue against what, you, what you're okay, saying. Go on, go on. Do you really think that Deshaun Watson is going to go under 500? I mean, their team might not be amazing, but they still have Brandon Cooks. No disrespect to Deshaun Watson, but this team is, I, I see a lot of um, – I see a lot of culture going wrong in this team, and I don't think that he'll be able to do it himself. But they have a solid defense. They have they, solid their defense is not very great. They, they have a pretty – who's on the secondary? Yeah, exactly. They don't have a – they have one offensive – they have, they have – they, their pass rushers are J.J. Watt, who's consistently injured, and their secondary is kind of depleted, and they have a below-average secondary. Uh, and I think that, like I said, Deshaun Watson will be able to keep them in games, but – I just they seem like a team that's on the the a downward turn since um that terrible loss to the Chiefs in which they had a 24 point lead and yeah we all know what happened. Yeah, I mean they have Justin Reed and Bradley Roby but still I'm not I'm not here to really argue for those players they're not elite players but I think that I still don't I just can't see Deshaun Watson going under 500. I mean he's just he's such an elite player. I mean, sometimes quarterbacks can carry their team, even if they have a below average. I mean, I mean, Aaron Rodgers went under. I mean, I know it's a totally different situation, but Aaron Rodgers went under 500 only a few years ago in 2018. They went seven and nine, and they just, I don't know. That's just what I, my, my premonition. So now we're going to go look at the Indianapolis Colts. I have the Indianapolis Colts going 10 and six and winning the division. Hmm. All right. Okay. I think they're, they're a good team. I don't, I'm not very high on Rivers. I think Rivers is – but he's better than Brissett, who they had last year. They got running back. They have receivers. They have probably the best offensive line in the league, and they have a solid defense. I, okay, okay. Can I – I'm going to dispute that. Go pretty, ahead. Pretty hard. Um, one, I, I don't understand the hype for the Colts. They're not the hype, but I think that generally people are, have a positive outlook on the Colts this year. I have them going eight and eight, so it's not like I hate the Colts that much. But what I see in the Colts is Philip Rivers, an old quarterback. I have no reason to believe that he'll play like the Philip Rivers of two years ago, where he's a top five quarterback, versus the Philip Rivers of last year, where he was seems very washed and old and turnover prone. I have no reason to believe that he won't be that turnover prone Philip Rivers, especially he's not getting any younger. Um, I don't. I don't. There's not much to like on that defense aside from uh, a few guys on the defensive line um as for the offense they've got some weird um running back duo with marlon mack and the guy that they just drafted out of wisconsin jonathan um taylor yeah 
So T.Y. Hilton is on their team. They're, they're fine, but I just don't see – there's not that much for me to like. They don't seem that exciting to me. They don't seem like a team that can consistently win games. And I don't have that much faith in Phillip Rivers as he's kind of been consistently he's, – he's a great, good quarterback, but he's never really taken a team that far. So I've got him going 8-8. Eight and eight. I, I don't – I don't know. I don't – but to, to be fair, I don't think that there's that much – there's not one clear – um, there's not one team rising above the pack this year in that division. I agree that there's not one team definitively rising above the pack, but the Colts have DeForest Buckner, Justin Houston, Darius Leonard, Malik Hooker. They have a solid defense, best offensive line in the league, in my opinion. I think Jonathan Taylor and so the had, I don't understand how that they, they just got Quinn and Nelson and now it's suddenly the best in the league. Like they were the worst in the league. No, it was for a while. They had a big terrible. Andrew, that's the reason Andrew Luck retired early. And then they got Quentin Nelson, who's a great player. But it, you think they're the best in the league now? Yeah. They have Cowboys, they about Nelson, to see Ryan Kelly, Anthony Consta- Costanzo. They have Braden Smith. Those are all four Pro Bowl to, to top offensive linemen in the league. They did is they got the, the Andrew Luck's last year. They got Quentin Nelson. I think they got Braden Smith. I could be wrong. And they had Ryan Kelly. They Anthony Costanzo was there. They had a bad offensive line, but the year for the Colts was they had a with Andrew Luck. They had a great offensive line, and I think that having a great offensive line for a quarterback is so important on two two different perspectives. You can say so great because they can run the ball, so great because you won't get hit all the time. Especially Philip Rivers, who's not a mobile quarterback. Philip Rivers can stay in the pocket and be protected, throw to his receivers. Yeah, but okay, I don't know couldn't really do that in LA I mean I see the argument that could be made that they're not good but I just think that they have a lot of talent on their team and they're going to come out of this lackluster division I I just think the Indianapolis Colts are a team that screams mediocrity when I look at them they've got a few talented guys but over I don't think that there's no like I was saying it's I don't think they're going to rise above the pack and that's why I have them going eight and eight 500 exactly average mediocre okay Uh, all right, so on to the next team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm not very high on the Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't really see that much potential in them, that much hype in them. I have them going 2-14. and 14. I could be wrong, but that is the type for the lowest in the whole NFL. Spoiler alert. Oh, okay. But 2-14, and 14, I mean, I don't really see them. They, I have them beating the Titans, which I think is an interesting win. I think that they can come out. Actually, I have them beating the Titans. Those are the only team that I have them beating the Titans twice. That's the only uh, game. Oh, what? That's ridiculous, and I think you know that, but now you can't correct it. Yeah, I can't correct it, but I also that think it's ridiculous. Honestly, thinking about it, I don't think it's that ridiculous. I think that they're not an amazing team. The I don't, I'm not very high on the Titans. They're fine. I know. We'll get to it. I feel like the Jaguars will be able to slow down a bit, Henry. And I think that's that's all that they really need to do. I get that Tannehill is good, but I think that Tannehill is so great because Henry's dominant. Well, we'll get just just wait until I talk about the Jaguars to get onto the Titans. All right, fine. Jaguars suck. They I got them going three and thirteen also for basically the same reasons as you. The wins I have them getting are against the Miami Dolphins, the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Indianapolis Colts actually in Week Seventeen. I thought that maybe if the Colts are going to make the playoffs, it might be a nothing game anyway. So that's why I did that. Um, I think you've said what there is to say about the Jaguars. They What once was the top defense in the league is now co- totally depleted with yeah. even the few guys left on their team requesting trades. And this offense, they've got Gardner Minshew. That's hopeful. And they've got a few young guys at wide receiver and still Leonard Fournette. So this offense could be maybe top 15, but that's still nothing. It's, their defense is terrible, and top fifth, probably 15th is not, is the best-case scenario for that offense. Exactly. So they like, really got nothing. Stuff, stuff goes well, then they can go 5-11 and 11 and have the top 15 offense. But, I mean, that's really their ceiling. They don't have a incredibly high ceiling. I don't really see them doing that well. Mm-hmm. All right, on to the Tennessee Titans. I have them going 7-9. I think, I think you like the Tennessee Titans. I don't yeah, see – Yeah, no, is it – what was it? What what made you tell that I like the Titans? Was it the Ryan Tannehill jersey I'm wearing, huh? I think Tannehill was on a roll, and so was Henry, and I think that they're both great players. But I just – I mean, I think that the NFL has a whole offseason to figure out how to slow down Henry in the slightest. I'm not saying they're going to stop him. I'm not saying – I'm not even sure that that's possible. He's huge and he's fast. I mean – I'm he's so ready. Player, but 
But if they start to slow him down, then it takes away the threat of Tannehill. And then if the threat of Tannehill is gone, then their offense is not as dominant anymore. And their defense isn't really that scary. I, okay, here we go. I don't understand. I, I think I'll, nearly I've been looking through NFL analysts and so many people have the Titans declining. And something that infuriates me is that those same people are the ones that have the Colts doing well. And my question to those people and to you, Oren, what makes you believe that, for example, Philip Rivers will suddenly do better and not be the turnover? Okay, so sorry, let me, let me backtrack for a second here. A main reason why people say they don't like the Titans is because they say, oh, Ryan Tannehill is not going to be able to maintain what he did last season. He was never, he was always a mediocre quarterback. But I think that that's dumb because Ryan, this was Ryan Tannehill's first season in a actually good system. So I think that if anything, it proves how good Ryan Tannehill can be when he's in a different system. He took them to, he, I think he only lost one game when he came in. He had the top passer rating in the league. And I'm not, I'm not telling, saying he's going to be the best quarterback in the NFL next year, but I don't see a reason why he will significantly, significantly move down to a below average quarterback or anything like that. And then to come to juxtapose it and to compare it to, Philip Rivers, who last year played terribly, those same people are going to say, oh, last year doesn't matter, and say that Philip Rivers is going to do well. So why are you giving Philip Rivers a pass and saying that the Colts will do well, while when you're looking at Ryan Tannehill's last season, you'll say that he's going to downgrade? Did that make sense? Yes. First of all, Ryan Tannehill, mm -hmm. Ryan Tannehill's downgrading is still going to be better than Philip Rivers being better. Let's get this straight. But the Colts, I believe, a better defense, a way better offensive line. Okay, and as okay, as for the defense, the Tennessee Titans, I think, have a pretty underrated defense, especially their secondary. They've got don't they have the the bird guy? I cannot remember names right now. What is his name? I don't know. But they, I think they've got a pretty they've got a pretty underrated secondary. If you look at the statistics, they were. I'm pretty. I I would bang on that. They were top ten last year in the NFL. So I think this defense is being slept on. It's not some average defense. And if, like, what? why do you think that they will decline so much? I, okay, I, I actually, I know why. I know what you said. But people have the entire offseason to scheme against Derrick Henry, but you don't think that the coaches on the Tennessee Titans know that? They can outsmart him. And the, the Tennessee Titans, a part of their game is also, they've got A.J. Brown, who's an emerging wide receiver, they still got Corey Davis, who's been just waiting to break out for the past three years. Uh, so I think Ryan Tannehill can show he's a threat as a pass. I think that, of course, Derrick Henry will be the uh, central part of this offense. But when you've got a guy like Derrick Henry, that's no problem. That shouldn't be a problem. And Ryan Tannehill, can, if he continues this efficiency, then I see this offense doing well and them going, I don't even know if I said their record. I said they will be going 9-7 and seven this season. Only nine and seven. I expect you to say something higher. No, oh, no, I, I know. <clears throat> I, that's what I was saying. There's no significant team going that high. I still, I have them going nine and seven, which is one game above the Colts. So, but still, I think that they'll win the division just because of how much momentum. This is what you love to talk about. Momentum. You want to talk about momentum? This team went insanely high. They they surpassed all expectations. They just beat a bunch a bunch of good teams. You can't suddenly assume that all of the NFL will be able to figure out Derrick Henry when they were able to upset so many teams in the second half of the season and make their way to the AFC championship. Yeah, you're silenced, aren't you? I can't tell if you just went I think you went out, but I'm gonna say I silenced you. Yeah, okay, he went out. I'm gonna pause it. All right, so all I have to say about the Titans is that, yes, that you can say that they had momentum, but I feel like if a team is driven by momentum one year, that's not necessarily a good thing. I feel like if a team has momentum, then that's driving them a better amount. And this year, they're not going to be able to sustain that momentum as much as they did last year, which can be perceived as a negative thing. And also, I'm not saying that they're going to be bad because they went 9-7 and seven last year, and they had a lot of momentum going into the playoffs. They won – a lot of their last games, they were very hot. And I just can't really see them sustaining how good they were doing last year. Why not? Year. Why not? What changed up from their team that you think that they won't do well? All I'm saying is that... No, Ryan, see, no, no, answer my question. What changed from the Titans that you think they will go, that you think they will drop from, and what were they last year? They went 9-7 and seven last year. That's what I have them going this year. And half of the season, 
they had Marcus Mariota and they were like, they started off the season like 0 and 5 or something like 0 and 4. They started off the season badly. So basically, what changed from this last year or this year that you think that they will suddenly decline? I think that they're just easily, I think that if, you, if you're able to stop Henry, then their whole team is gone. I so think why, what makes you think that teams will be able to stop Henry? Because if you have whole- it's not like suddenly you can scheme around him. He's so, if you look, okay, his, his probably his most famous run two years ago against the Jacksonville Jaguars, the 99 yard touchdown. It wasn't yeah. some, it wasn't like he got past one defender and had an f- easy pass to the end zone. He stiff armed that entire team, like all the way from, from the 10 yard line on one way to the other 10 yard line the other way. He was fighting off defenders that entire way. So it's not like it's, it's so easy to tackle him. I, that's just one play that I'm uh, referring to to prove that he is not so, so easy to suddenly tackle Derrick Henry. That's, he, he's a workhorse, and I think that they can continue to work this offense around him. And I don't see, even if teams know that they're going to run the ball, it's, there's a difference between knowing and be able, being able to stop it. People know yeah. the Kansas City Chiefs are going to chuck it up. That doesn't yeah. mean Last year, the, the – people wouldn't be able to completely stack the box because they were worried that Tannehill would be hot and come out. And I'm not sure that Tannehill will no, be. No, they a- weren't. At the start, you think when Tannehill got the start, people were worried about him. No, if, not if, now you, Tannehill is more of a threat. People, I, I don't think so. I think that, P, I think that, yes, to begin with the first week or two, but also that people are going to stack the box this year. What? Then, then how do you think, what, what's a solution that you have to combat Derrick Henry and the Titans? You stack the box and let okay, then Derek, then then Ryan Tannehill will just chuck it up to Corey Davis, chuck it up to AJ Brown. That's what they were doing. That's how this offense succeeds. That's exactly what happened last year. Why do you if anything, it should be the opposite that last year they were able to stack the box and then Ryan Tannehill threw it a bunch. But now that they have to work around that. Oh, because the, no, because last year there was a clear threat of Tannehill. They weren't able to stack the box. What do you mean by that clear threat of Tannehill? Dan Hill was, was not a threat. Nobody expected Tannehill to be good when he came in. Yes, but after two weeks, people realized that he was playing well. That's not was, true. That people, I'm sure Tannehill was underestimated, if anything. It was not, Tannehill was not the reason that people were scheme. It wasn't a clear threat. I don't even know what you're talking about. A clear threat of Tannehill. People, when people are playing the Tennessee Titans, they're not going to say, we have, to, we have to work around Tannehill. They're, they're focusing on tackling Henry. So, yeah. Uh, I don't if, you, know. if you if you finish Henry, then I don't see that team doing very well. Yes, were, I, I just think you're making, sound, you're making it sound like finishing Henry or, or just Derrick Henry is, is easy is super easy. When in no, reality, it's not easy. But if a team is able to contain Derrick Henry, look at the AFC Championship game. They contained Derrick Henry, and look what happened. Yeah, it was still a close game. But I mean, not that's anything. remarkable. And I'm not saying the times are that was against the Chiefs for crying out loud. Okay, here. The fact that they were able to be winning against the Chiefs, anti championship score. The fact that they were able to be winning against the Chiefs in the first half, and they lost by 11, but that's still a considerably close game against the, against the defending champions. Uh, team, I clearly, I obviously think the Chiefs are better than the Titans. I'm not trying to argue that. But the Titans don't have to play the Chiefs at 16 games, they have to play worse teams, and they're going to beat those teams. You can't yes, say that. You give us kind of momentum the last Chiefs year. Did. Momentum the also has the Chiefs also have the best offense in the league, so of course they're going to be able to put up. Yes, that like, momentum won't come over. They don't have to play the Chiefs, but also if they had the momentum last year, I would have them going twelve and fourteen, thirteen and three. But they don't have the momentum that they had last year. I'm saying that they when they played the Chiefs, they had a ridiculous amount of momentum, mm-hmm. more than any other team in the NFL. Okay, they're not going to have that momentum this year. It's very why not? Unlikely. Why not? Why not? Because it's very unlikely they start the year one and five and then win their first seven games. Okay, Less you know games. whatever. We want to just move on here because I'll let I'll let the Titans. Also, I had I had Ryan Tannehill in fantasy football. So am I partial? No, of course not. But I uh, he you know he he might have won fantasy for me so. If you enjoyed this episode of From the Den, please remember to subscribe, comment, and like this video. Or, if you're a Packers fan, remember to dislike and leave a nasty comment. Click the links on the screen to access additional content.